there, everyone. Welcome back to TNO, the last days of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover. Right now, though, we are finishing up a focus called The Partisans in Alden. Of all the nations that surround us, corrupt in their ideologies and hostile to all intent to build towards a new workers' future, there's one that stands out in the territories of the Far East, the Free Fighters. Partisans, lovers, natives, and the idealists. They are the backbone that make up Alden. They are the refugees of a war-torn nation, world, and in a place like this, they are a beacon, much like us. Except they possess no will to drive Russia and its inhabitants into a new era of prosperity. Instead, rightfully so, they remain where they are and defend their homeland. We, however, have ideas that go beyond containing the revolution, with the potential to become fast allies, and we have authorized communication with Alden. We, may we hope that they coalesce forces with us in the eternal struggle. Whisper, a whimper of the Siberian tiger. Salvin sat drinking tea with Braun, Pachiro, and Makib as they listened to the report of Olanovskaya, recently returned from her harsh journey through the taiga to visit the long-suffering partisans of Alden. Very little food, great war-era guns, constant border raids by bandits, most of all, comrades, these people are tired. Few are under 30, most are simply peasants who wish to return to their old lands in the desperate hope that their families are still alive. Will they support our revolution? asked Braun, sipping his tea as he looked over the rims of his glasses. Soblin frowned, but he had to admit, Braun was, not no was nothing if not pragmatic. Among those remember a time before endless chaos and pri pri privation. Or privation. There are those who keep the dream of Lenin and Marx alive, replied Olanovskaya. After speaking with Olcherov and his council, they seem wretchedly eager to offer control of all their land in exchange for food, protection, and the right to return home. It was moving, comrades. These people need our help more than any other. I agree with comrade Olanovskaya, said Mahiv. Unusually dour, many of our partisans are Berats with family there. And here, aside from the righteousness of aiding the downtrodden, we gain a tactical advantage by absorbing the land and perhaps some additional sorely needed manpower. Braun placed down his teacup with an audible click. I concur. The benefits far outweigh the potential risks, and we need any advantage we can get. Pichiro nodded her approval, looking over with an ever so slightly raised eyebrow at Sablin. Returning that raised eyebrow, Sablin turned to small Ulanovskaya. I wholeheartedly agree with the supporting the Alden partisans. It's a favorable deal, and besides anything else, it is our manifest duty to aid the poor and oppressed folk of Russia. Sablin raised his teacup in a mock salute. Alden, then the rest of Russia. All the brothers and sisters under socialism. However, the more friendship. Versus a way home. Oh, this one first. Slide trickery and deception is common, almost expected, even of Russia's dark age. Such as it is, it only makes sense that the partisans of Alden would adopt us in binding relations together. That is why we must go above and beyond what is expected, and send over negotiations that would sign a non aggression pact with them, and that, in no uncertain terms, should it be broken. The trust that any nation or people hold in a government will break down. If this goes through, it would be much easier to bring ourselves closer to another light in the East, followed up with a way home. What if we... We can make a friendship if there's guards patrolling the border. If a man from Alden wishes to come home in Baratia, what need is there to stop and frisk him, interrogate him, punish him for wishing to go back home? This lack of clemency means that no relationship built on closed offenses and rifles pointed at the other side will last, and we must seek to resolve it as soon as possible. With proper negotiation, we'll make sure that every man, woman, and child will move through safely, unhindered in the passage, and comfortable in the knowledge that they are welcome in our lands just as much as they are in Alden. We do have some comments to go through as well. Uh, someone says, let's see, so, uh, actually quite a few guys say that authoritarian social sovereign is much more realistic than, you know, Lipsock, which I agree, yeah, definitely, I totally agree with that, but comrades in arms. Glorious days, the people of Alden have shown strong support for these measures, so much so that there have been rallying cries that our two nations unite, having overlooked the situation at hand, we see no reason to not go ahead with the proceedings. Our government shall henceforth petition that the Alden government, the proposal to bind our nations into one. If they accept, there will be one more set of peoples joining us in the quest for liberation. <clears throat> The Barat Autonomous Soviet Socialist Republic to expand its reach and another territory, free and equal, will join the fray. Nice. We definitely want some of that stuff. And I want to keep doing that stuff, but we definitely need to work on some of our guns. Yeah, the guns are not very good. Also, I did switch up some of these guys. I made a new division, so we have Artie, which we're going to throw Artie on here. Maybe. But also, I've made some... Because we had, like, 6 army XP, so I figured, you know what, let's go to 16 combo with. It's better than 14 combo with. Might as well, right? Might as well. And let's see... We don't have a lot of artists, so I figured we have, we got enough guns, so we might as well do this. So, but we need definitely more um, army XP. So we'll see. Comrades in arms. Hopefully they don't die over there, and we can absorb them because we love absorbing them. Reunite the families. Oh, that seems like a good idea. Let's do have some coffee as well here to keep us nice and warm. Oh, that'd be really good to get. Oh, let's get the army XP. Integrate their armies. War is a bloody and violent thing that ruins the minds of men, leaving them as ghosts and shells, yet it is cruel and necessary evil that is known in much of the world, where peace is a rarity and truces are cherished. Many of Alden's partisans are older men, willing to settle down and never pick up a rifle again for that. Their services are respected and their wishes obligated. But there will always remain those willing to serve, to carry a gun into battle. The younger men are filled with a fervor. The revolution, they believe, will be carried out with bullets and blood. They are, unfortunately, not wrong. And so their services will be put to use. Every one of these men that serve the ASSR 
carry the dream and ideals of a world untarnished by violence. But then we must rise heck before the calm can arrive. We get 5,000 more manpower and get some more arm XP, which is awesome. Uh, let's see. We have stage 1 already. We need to do this one, so we got to wait for that just a little bit. And we already did this stuff. Cool. Nice. And war development or warlord development. We don't really need that. We don't believe in warlord development. We believe in societal development. Eh, whatever. Homeward bound. Salvatore was mist of his breath, froze in tiny crystals of ice that fell glimmering and fell into the crisp packed snow. Near Siberians called it the Whisper of Stars, shivering alongside him despite their heavy, heavy fur coats, were the rest of the Central Committee. Though it was morning, the mists rising off the forest blurred the sun, giving the impression that they were looking at everything through a frosted window. <clears throat> they seemed to coalesce out of the mist, a legion of phantoms slogging through the snow in their tattered uniforms, the southern's eyes. The partisans of Alden seemed like tortured specters of the past, once valiant warriors who had been denied their eternal rest, and now were on the land, forever trapped in the mortal realm. They stared forward, eyes guttering and dim, carrying guns held together by little more than faith, squinting in the dawn as though unaccustomed to going about in the light of the day. Salvin's heart wretched to see the horses trudge huffing through the snow, ribs poking from their skin in the quiet struggle they seemed to have formed the image of the rider's long years of torment and deprivation. He saw the blood and sweat of painful decades lurking behind the guttering gazes of man and beast. Saluting as he appeared out of the fog, Guzap Ochorov rode before Sablin and dismounted. Though he was as gaunt as his men, his eyes still burned with love for freedom and the revolution. Gripping his arm in greeting, Sablin could tell that this was a man who would di sooner die than give up to the fight. After that, it was a simple matter of signing the treaty. The revolution's troops moved north into Alden as the partisans were finally freed from the long years of penury and anguish. As they marched into the south to return to their homes and families, Sablin saw their eyes shining or I shine lambent with a long doubt's light of pure, simple joy. Every traveler learned to appreciate home more than more from his wandering. Honestly, I don't know if I got that one. Like, when I played Soblin and Lipsock Soblin, I'm not sure if I actually got uh, Alden, but I could be wrong about that, but we'll see. We'll see. I want more stability. Reunite the families, even though we could use more artillery. Whatever. Finally, we are two nations acting as one, and we will prosper all the more for it. However, some voices echo the thought that we should do more than just bring them in. Looting, plundering, raiding, they've all torn apart marriages, children, from parents, and communities that remain divided. We will not only accept the partisans of Alden, we will guide them to their homes, reunite them with their loved ones, and heal the many wounds that have been pro prolonged needlessly for all these decades past. So now we have a much bigger border, which is a little concerning. We are making two divisions at once, which, you know, they're okay. These, they're, I think these guys still, but still. Integrate their armies. And salvage. Oh, well, we'll salvage equipment next, but you know the armies. Thank you very much. In the east, industrial capacity is something that every nation craves. <clears throat> oh, God. Oh, God, no. If you want to read about the North Awakens, please go right ahead. Uh, to output weapons capable of defending themselves, and in some cases, using them for purposes of expansion. <laughs> Look at this one. Oh, no. <clears throat> it is what makes or breaks a community, whether it will live or die in the plains, forests, or frozen over mountains of Siberia. With the integration of Alden, however, we've gained access to their unused armories, stockpiled with outdated but very still very useful equipment. With these, we will make sure that the unification make sure the unification of Russia is accelerated. Awesome. Oh though Sa the Siberian Black Army just loves attacking us. Bro, like I get it, and I do appreciate it actually, just because it gives us more experience and more political power and stuff like that, so keep going guys, keep doing it, keep doing it. Dreams of freedom. Oh, Hitler's dead. Goodbye, Hitler. Have a good time. Rest in heck, Banana Man. I don't think anyone's ever called Hitler Banana Man before, but I could be wrong. They always attack up here, so it's kind of different that they're attacking over here. Uh oh, we're losing. They did come in with like three divisions, so. But if we move our guys down. Oh, now we got two divisions. Not bad. Oh, come on, baby boys. Come on. Come on, Banana Boys. Come on. You cannot afford to lose. Of course, this guy's not very good in defense. He's level 1. Mikhail is not very good. And the game is lagging super hard for the uh, German Civil War. And then, let's have some coffee. Actually, it's not bad. It seems a little faster than it used to be. Ah, good, good. We should be winning. Kill every last one of them, you, these pieces of garbage. They are trash, and they shall be treated like trash. You know what? Go scavenger. Nice. Very good. And a little bit more lag for other nations. Look at that arm XP. I love it. Uh, ah, everyone read about that? Please go ahead. Yay, got some more guns, got some more political power, got some more um, stability. 
It's only 1%, but I'd gladly take that. Now, I don't like this guy just because I prefer someone more balanced, like Boris Slutsky. He's a defensive person, he's reckless, he's a trickster. So he's a little bit more balanced than another guy. Obviously, the other guy has more attack and such, but still. There you go. Nice, thank you. Expansion in Africa. Very cool. The Warsaw Uprising, the Social Spirit. The socials of oppressed nations must, in their turn, unfailingly fight for the complete, including organizational unity of the workers of the oppressed and oppressing nationalities of Vladimir Ilyevich Olenov. A revolution is impossible if the workers are not like the chains. Are like chains, their links interlocking with each other. And every link is as strong as steel. If we can follow such a policy, the peoples of Alden will be united with us in our want, need, and demand for a better world. If their goals align with ours, they will find it easier to integrate themselves within the new makings of our new society, and in turn, will set a precedent for those who join the ASSR henceforth. Oh, look at that! Yay, another division, and th th these are these other guys. Serves rise up, very nice. Nice, good, 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 good. So now, we actually have enough artillery. We won't have a lot of it, so I think for now, we're just going to keep throwing on more guys here. So this will be technically 20 combo with eventually, so just throw on more infantry for now, I or infantry equipment. We have more than enough of it. We're going to save this already for later. And by later, I mean make them 40 combo with. So, I think that's the goal. Can you just all become like 20? Just do that one. You might as well. Nice. And the world's falling apart, as it should. Yay! And then the Far Eastern War. While a bitter and unsatisfying peace reigned in the East, things have suddenly shifted so suddenly and so quickly. From the rise of the mysterious Alexander Man in the North to the bloody conflict that has resulted in the unification of the Haben Three in the East, two sudden issues begin to plague us. With the new forces on both sides, we'll have to make our moves carefully. Lest the torch of our revolution is extinguished, our soldiers will ready their rifles, steal their minds, and prepare themselves for war once more. We get more war support, more division speed, attrition, our supply. Uh, so all okay. Not great, but all okay. With seven divisions are not bad. Go ahead and train for now. I would like to destroy these guys as fast as possible. We gotta save some political power so that we can core stuff as fast as possible as well, even though we wanna get more loot too. Um, we get 0.37 every single day, which is not great, but it's better than losing some. Uh, someone says, even though this is more realistic, it's much more unwholesome. But yeah, yeah, that is what it is. Yeah, yeah. I don't I definitely don't disagree there. And someone says, say yes to Bukharanist comrades. Yes, hello. Yes. Would you look at that? We have five more army XP. That is quite a beautiful thing, I would say. Just pure infantry. I would like to throw recon on here eventually, but we don't think we have the support coming forward, do we? We barely have. Well, we have a little bit, but not much. All right. The Eastern War. Tragedy and the Foss in the Exile. The Hobbin Three were a curious but ultimately disgusting situation. In the aftermath of the chaos that swarmed Russia, they made their homes in the East, their ideologies festering and corrupting. Mikhail II of Cheetah, a self-proclaimed Tsar, the deathly enemy that Lenin decidedly fought against in the Great October Revolution. The scene of Tsarum return. Abiding its time to throw Russia back into the past, Mikhail Makovsky of Magadan, a ridiculous idea to make the idea of fascism, in all its blood so glory, something that the people of Russia wouldn't be willing to adopt. Only folly follows in Makovsky's wake. Konstantin Rozhevsky of Amur, nothing but a bandit, a scoundrel, a murder, following in the insanity's footsteps. The madness of National Socialism had infested his mind, with the so-called Vaz representing everything that Russia is to fight and annihilate from this world. Now the victor of these three stands tall, ready to be torn down. Ah oh, man, I'll be honest, like, Amur, <clears throat> I've played this pretty much almost every single Russian unifier. It's a great campaign, but it's incredibly difficult. Holy crap, I, if you, oh my god, like, it's really difficult, especially early on. Oh my god. Um, who do we want to do next? Cheetah does not exist, so if you wonder about this, please go right ahead. End of the schemes, um, Magadan, Strike of the Nazi, honestly, Magadan, I think we'll do first, end the schemes. For all that Mikoski is, he has managed to build a farce of a Russian nation based on the principles of fascism, and managed to have it not collapse immediately. While he is capable and clever, he is dangerous and capable of undermining the revolution. It'll be all for naught, however. Our armies will be quickening on the problem, and will snuff the candle of fascism before it blazes into an inferno, threatening to drag the people of Russia into a reactionary heck. We're just going straight to war with him. There's going to be no peace with us and between us and him. Oh, that's not bad. And hopefully we'll go to war with the, uh... Oh, there goes Serbia. Bye, Serbia. Good luck. Hey, bonus schools, agriculture methods. Thank you. Dreams of freedom, anything here yet? No. Oh, look at that. Nice. The sins of our roots. Uh, we wonder about that, please go ahead. God dang it. And the schemes. Man of God. Oh, God, no, I don't want to do that one. Oh. The canal riots against all tyranny. Salvin mounted the hastily constructed stage in the square outside the opera house to address his supporters, who had turned it out in their thousands to hear him speak. Walking carefully, half afraid that the platform would collapse, Salvin approached the microphone, joining the central committee. After tapping the microphone twice to make sure it was working, he began. 
Comrades, we boomed over the plaza. Our revolution has triumphed over its first adversary. Adversary. The despot Yagoda. Thunderous cheers erupted from the crowd, their clouded breath forming a low layer of mist in the cold of the morning. Smiling, Southern continued. But the mission is not yet done still. Russia lies broken and divided, her corpse picked over by the Tsars, the revisionists, and the fascists. It is a manifest duty of a revolution to liberate the oppressed peoples of Russia, to build a new nation faithful to the immortal science of Marx and Lenin. We will not rest until Russia is united by the Socialist Revolution from the Baltic to the Pacific. He was forced to pause here as a cacophonous approval of the crowd would have drowned out anything he said. As the cheering died down, he continued, For those who are downtrodden, we bring hope. For those who believe in a brighter future, we bring deliverance. For the enemies of the people, we bring nothing but defeat. We stand against all tyranny. Comrades, we march to the east to bring liberation, to cast down the tyrants. Long live Marx, Lenin, and the Socialist Revolution. Greeting from ear to ear. Southern raised his fist, driving the crowd wild with revolutionary fervor. That evening, they would begin the march east. He could already taste the sweetness of victory. No king, no tyrants. Strike at the Nazi. Dread has returned to the Russian Far East, and Rajevsky is his name. With his nation being the mount that he rides upon, not many words need to be said about the dangers that a Nazi state presents, not just to us, but the whole world. Rajevsky and his clique of bloodthirsty murders and terrorists must be put down. There will be no remorse. There will be no second chances, even among Sovereign's more soft-hearted enemies and members, or members, really. There is a universal agreement that this mantra of madness must end. Rajevsky will die, and his nation will be swept into the dustbin of history. He must be. <clears throat> How strong are they? Uh, they're actually not too weak. Which is a little concerning. Come on, get it done. Because I don't want them to get too much organization. Because our guys are not too bad. We'd have plenty of equipment, though. Well, at least guns. Oh, the government won. Good job, government. We're literally going straight on in. I want you to go literally straight down. And now we can't do any focuses, which kind of sucks, but at the same time, that's kind of okay. 2v1 is not bad. Obviously, Amur. Actually, it's not bad. As long as Amur can hold, they don't have that many divisions. They, oh, my God. They literally... Oh, well. They're done. Well, all right. Whatever. Go there. And go right there. Actually, that's not bad for us, actually. Since these guys took everyone else out, that's not bad. Ah, if you wonder about this, please go ahead. The skies are ours. Yay. Nice. Cut them off. Cut them off. Kill them off. Cut and kill. Cut and kill. Go, 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 go. Seven versus seven is not bad, my friends. Oh, hello. Uh -huh. Go in here. Seriously, just kill him off. Uh, that's good. That's very good, actually. Oh, that division died. Yes, 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 yes. I want you to hold. I want you to hold. Get everyone on the front line, and then we'll start more attacks. We've killed off 15,000 already. Holy crap, that's really good. That is really good. Get some more uh, defensive breakthrough. Thank you very much. Better guns. Better soldiers. A better Russia. Actually, if you want to go win, can we actually do a general attack here? Then again, I mean, it would help if I actually did this. There you go. Oh, yes, let him attack us. Now go. If you can. That's good. Uh, as long as you don't attack down here too much, you'll be okay. 10 army speed's pretty nice too. Love it. And getting more political power would be great, because we need to core everything as fast as possible before we kill the divine mandate. Because that's going to be such a gigantic pain in the butt. My apologies about that, but let's continue on the little uh, game we have here with Magadan. It doesn't help that a lot of these areas are probably not cored yet, like Amur. Yeah, they're definitely not cored, so that's good for us. How much manpower do they have? 35 divisions, that's so nice to see. 3,000 which is not bad. We have 20,000 ourselves, so we should do fairly well, especially if we cut them off, right? Right? Please and thank you, please and thank you. Oh, you want to attack us? Uh, we'll die then. We'll just die for our amusement. Um, you over here you could probably hang out. Yeah, you don't really need to go over there. Actually, that's not too bad if you just go right here. Oh, you're doing that. Okay, then. Um, yeah. Honestly, even though it's, it's kind of costly doing it like this, this is really good for army XP. Like, this is ridiculously good. Nice. Not bad. Not bad. If you both want to come up here, actually, I'll be okay with that. That's sec. All right. Scavenge for some more looty booty. Yes, we love those looty booties. Hey, look at that. Not bad. Not bad. <clears throat> Very good, very good. And you could probably just make it all the way over here. Could take a while, but that's okay. 100 PP is very good, because we need core a lot of states. A lot, a lot of states. Oh, if you could just get over there first. Oh, that'd be so nice to cut them off. We still might be able to cut these guys off. This division off. Come on, baby boys. Come on. You got this. Please. Please. 
Oh, we couldn't cut him off. Well, that's okay. Our other division is just, just moving out. They're just straight up moving out. Go, 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 go. All three divisions are there. Holy crud. You go there. That's all they have left are three divisions, it looks like. We lost 4,000, which honestly is not that bad. That's actually pretty good. Help him out. Help him out. And bring more firepower to him. There you go. Come on. Come on. Get over there before these guys do. We maybe maybe get over there. Yes, no, maybe so. There you go. Help them out. Now they're gonna ah, there you go. Nice. Now they have a single division, and we won. Hey, wonder about that. Please, your head. Great, great. <gasps> we made another division too. Oh, this is so good, my friends. So good. Let's go and core these. Ooh, look at this. Against the capitalists. Oh, go war straight war with them. Okay, who's up first? Uh, decapitate the serpent. For all his mental prowess, they did not save Matkovsky and his wretched ilk when we flew them the flag over Magadan and proclaim our victory. With Matkovsky captured, his crime shall be listed, the will of the people shall be heard, and his fate shall be determined swiftly, and the rest of his insidious gang shall follow with. There will be no mercy shown to the fascism. Wherever its roots dig, it only brings suffering, and here the fate of it will be determined. Will be locked away into irrelevance, or will we burn it out? Um, we're not really ready for that one yet. Um... We do own this stuff, so these guys will be auto-completed. There's nothing here about Yakutia, so I guess we just have to manually take them out. So then it's just literally us versus them. It's nice having eight divisions. That's not bad. That's really not bad. Oh, Siberian Black people. Black Army. Siberian Black Army. Not bad. Uh, Yeah, I'll just probably best to wait. Good war them. Yakutia, I am sorry for your existence. It is unfortunate. Let our guys get some more time, get more organization first. Five, four, three, two, the very weak. Anyways, let's go. The faster we go, the faster we can probably core their lands. <clears throat> the us uh, Mikhail Metkovsky. Uh, Mikhail Ag Alexevich Metkovsky, this court of soldiers and workers finds you guilty of crimes against the socialist revolution and the common people of Russia. Drawn brown from the bench in the gallery. The audience jeered and flung insults at Metkovsky three days of tearful interviews with the recently liberated inmates of the camp to erase any hope for a clemency that the tyrant may have been holding out for. Sullivan watched with a smirk as Mikowski clenched his fists and ground his teeth, staring at Brown with bulging eyes. For your crimes, this court sentences you to 20 years of rehabilitative labor and the service of the revolution, finished Braun. Clasping his hands, he looked down at his nose at Mikowski. Have you anything to say? <clears throat> yes, spat Mikowski, shooting to his feet to a chorus of ridicule from the gallery. I reject the legitimacy of the so-called court. This is nothing more than a Buharanist show trial, a travesty of justice. Under what authority do you try me? Phil was sudden rage at the tyrant's weaseling. Soblin snatched the carpenter's hammer and used they were using it as a gavel and slammed it against the bench. The bang erupting through the hall like a gunshot, much to his satisfaction, the fascist flinched, standing and filling his voice with vitriol. Soblin said, Tyrant Mikowski, we trial you by the authority of the workers and the peasants you oppressed. Hear them, fascist. They cry out for justice, thrusting his arm in the direction of the gallery. There was a war with a cacophony of yelling and stomping from the gathered masses. After that, Mikowski was dragged away, screaming threats that went ignored. Grinning ferociously, Sabin felt himself lifted up by the joy of triumph and adulation of the crowd. The scourge of the East had been cast down by his hand. Now he could turn his gaze to the West soon. All of Russia will be free of tyrants and oppressors. Fascism is capitalism, plus murder. Well, I guess we're not going to be able to do this one, so if you want to read about this one, please go ahead, as well as... Smash a swastika. But we do have to do the silence... East silenced. It was difficult and bloody, but we have finally excised the tumor of fascism and collaborationism from the Far East. The remnants of the monarchist and feuding cliques of the Russian fascist party have fl fled to lick their wounds abroad, and the people can once again breathe easy. We cannot rest, however. The hard work of bringing these new territories into the fold is solely ours to perform. Extending our social programs into these areas will likely be popular, but we cannot predict how the people, unused to true socialism, after so many years of tyranny, will respond to the newfound freedom. Ensuring that we stay on the good side as we begin our reforms is a must. The Lord's word for all to hear. It is heaven hymns that we sing. Oh boy. Go ahead here. Another division, just in time. Good, good, good. And that's not good. That's not good. Not good, not good, not good, not good, not good, not good. Not good. Bring the sword. That's gonna suck so hard. You should be able to be there like right now. Come on, man. There you go. Capitulate, capitulate. Okay, that's good. Um, hold. Because we need you to guys to go. This is a massive front line. I hate fighting these guys so much. 80,000 manpower. Uh, we're pretty equal in terms of divisions, which is nice. Oh, let's integrate them too. That's good. About a month after to integrate those guys. That'll be good. Just flee. Go to wherever you need to go. Seriously. Because they're going to spawn divisions behind us. A message of hope. Fyodor Olga... Oh... Olegovich Rogov stood in line with the rest of his freed inmates, stamping his feet, hugging his arms to his chest for warmth, his breath steaming in front of him in the raw morning air. As the head of the queue, one of the Sablonites handed out this mail that had recently arrived from Vaknudinsk. Pimply and skinny, he was young enough to be Fyodor's son. Though he shivered in the cold, Fyodor hardly felt it. 
Inside, he was warmed by the hope that he would finally receive word of his family. He had not seen in almost a decade, since he was sent to the camps before owning books by Marx and Lenin, forcing his wife and daughter to flee into the West. The Southernites had been good to him, and the other prisoners giving him new clothes and three meals a day, although they were still being quartered in the camp. Your name, comrade, asked the boy soldiers. Fyodor reached the front. Fyodor told him and was rewarded with a letter. Heart lurching in his throat, he stumbled away to a quiet place, alone when he tore the envelope open, working out the letter. It was from his daughter, Iona. For years he had not known even if she was still alive, a dozen emotions surging in his mind like waves in a stormy beach, he began to read. Dearest Papa, we're in Vaknudinsk now, and finally safe. How I wish I had enough paper and ink to tell you of our adventure into the West all those years past, or the joy of my heart. It felt when I learned that you lived, I have changed a great deal, and am no longer, I think, the girl that I was once when you last knew me. Above all else, I long to hold you in my arms once again. I look forward to that day more than I can say. Pressing his eyelids to shut to hold back his tears, Fyodor smiled, feeling the lightness of hope for the first time in years. All of a sudden, the world was much larger again, and there was some small place in it for him. I have no bird, no net ensnares me. <clears throat> the man of God. The liberation of Cheetah, Magadan, and Amur from the reactionaries was, to most people, the end of the fight for regional control, with socialism ascendant and the right in shambles. Who could say that there were struggles yet to come? There is one major enemy left of the left remaining, and not one that anyone expected. We don't know how it happened, but the preacher Alexander Men, or Men, has launched his bid for the reunification of Russia. He has managed to raise a large but ramshackle army of zealots to fight for communal, almost anarchistic, yet theocratic society in the frigid reaches of the Far East. Men is no monster, but if he stands in the way of the revolution, he will be stopped with force. How much? Uh, we got good amount. We have a good amount of artillery already. Holy crud, That's really nice, actually. <clears throat> Well, this kind of sucks, I'll be honest. Uh, hey, we got that one done, which is nice. Keep going with this off. Um, uh, this is just... I hate fighting Alexander Men so much. It's such a bad war for us. It's not even funny. Can you guys actually do well here? Yeah, might be able to. We're going to lose the port of Magadan, but whatever. Oh, come on. Yeah, maybe not. You hold. Can you just fight these guys here? No. You got it. They're militia, for the God's sake. Are you really that bad? That's stupid. That's really stupid, man. Oh, I hate this war so much. Goodbye, Nixon. How can you not win here, either? I guess they're motorized, but still. You should easily be able to win there. They're only militia. Only militia. At this point, just... Now I can probably do well against these guys. Go in here. My goal is to encircle them as much as possible. Hopefully we don't get encircled as much as possible. Because they're going to be spawning more divisions behind us, which is going to suck. Okay, we're against a holy, a war of restraint. Let's war support division defense. Um, mm, let's do war against a holy. The so-called great father of the north has called his legions of disillusioned followers towards our state with the goal of completely de-establishing de everything we've worked so hard for so long to achieve. The peasants of Siberia seem to heed every beck and call they had issues, empowered by his message of religion and reaction. This uh, led to Comrade Sabin himself reevaluating the nature of the ro role of religion in his division union. Currently, the general policy that we've retained regarding religion is that of secularism. The church and state are separate, and to each man their faith if necessary. However, the old Union of Lenin held a strict policy of state atheism, working to eliminate the admittedly problematic influence of religion on secular life. Perhaps we should rethink our approach to religion and its role within the territory that we control? Maybe. Just maybe. Go in, go in, go in, so we don't get encircled. Why don't you go right here next? Actually, honestly, you guys don't even go that way. I want you to go this way. We're going to focus on the far western side first. I want you guys to go here, so you don't get encircled. Do not get encircled, for the love of God. Go in here. Beat them up. You find them, you beat them. Just, just words to live by. You find people, you beat them. Thank God we're going to core these places. Hope it gets more manpower. Oh, we just literally doubled our factory count. Oh, that's so nice. Yes, please. Yes. 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 Oh, that's so nice. That's so good. Actually, we can make some ships. I don't really want to make any ships. Maybe we'll make one. Here, you can have a Shuka. And a lot of convoys. Nice. Very good. Very. I love it. 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 Oh, she have manpower now. Look at that. Go figure. Who thought manpower was important? We did. Oh, oh, you kidding me? Arr. Can you deploy these guys at all? A single division, that sucks, man. That really sucks. I hate fighting Alexander Men so much. Um, you might actually just be able to beat these guys here. Maybe we'll see. Yes. 
That's so stupid. Like, how does he get all the way down here? Like, it maybe make one thing make sense of, like, the newly acquired territories, but, like, all the way near, basically near a capital? I don't like that. Um, if you worry about this one, please go right ahead, but we're gonna do Crackdown on the Opiate. Opiate. Unfortunately, sooner or later, the truth must be recognized. The foe we're facing is not Father Men or is a reactionary lot. Our enemies in this war is religion itself, for without its perversive, pervasive influence, such a disaster would never befall the laws of our people. Comrade Sullivan has thus contemplated the measures we would take, or could take, to oppose the influence of the Church and other institutions of religion. Suppression, overt, both overt and covert, have been rejected time after time. Ultimately, however, no alternative to it was found as compromises and naive ideas of coexistence were set aside as well. It would seem a crackdown is the only real option we have at our disposal to rid us of further insurrection, and we have no choice but to use it. Others will no doubt exploit this to paint our revolutionary zeal as ravagings or ravings of militant atheists. Some may blame us for robbing the people of their faith and compare us to tyranny that we originally fought. We must not allow these accusations to plague our thoughts in the end. It is us who will find ourselves on the right side of history. Lose some political power? That's alright. Happens. Good. Just go in, take all this land, kill them off. This is stupid! Are you- How? This- Oh my god, are you kidding me? Okay, so I, I honestly think this needs a slight rework, because they should not be able to spawn right- Literally next to our capital, like, what the heck? I get it that they're like, like, you know, rebels and such, but why? Why? And what god forsaken world do we live in where they just take our capital like that? Like, seriously. If we lose, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna like, I'm gonna use console commands. Like, this is stupid. That is, that's just so incredibly stupid. Who designed that? <laughs> why? And this is why I'm playing Salvin before it gets, hopefully, a reworked a little bit more. Because this is, this is unfair. That's 100% unfair. I get it, like, spawning rebels in enemy territory, but... At the same time, like, bro, you should have some sort of way to counter counter that type of influence. That's so incredibly stupid. Modeling. Kill them off. We want to kill off literally all the manpower they have. Which is about similar to us, but still. I'll close the recapitulation. We're halfway. That's 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 a completely unfair. Like, come on, seriously. I'll go this way. I want you to just go all the way down there. Um, the struggle against theocracy. Alexander Man has instilled dangerous values in the less educated parts of our nation. The peasantry are riled up, believing that man is here as the savior of the north from the communist forces that surround him. Though we are still still painful lack of manpower, to truly staff everything at once, we are able to divert some of our forces to effectively garrison uppity villages, and remind him that Alexander Man is not a savior, merely a man who dangerously thinks himself to be one. Jesus Christ. I mean, look at this crap. Look at this. Just spawning more and more and more and more. Are you kidding me? That's so stupid. Force it. Force the attack for you guys, at least. Man needs a rework. He just really needs a rework. Joshua wins in Oslin. Do we have any... Good. Let's find these guys out now. Because that has just... It's infuriating to see this. Like, why? Why? God dang it. Don't get over and run over and circled. There you go. Don't worry about that, please go ahead. So incredibly stupid. Kill them off. Just kill them off. Kill them off like the dogs they are. As long as we get our coots back, we'll be relatively okay ish. There we go, that's better. That's better. Kill them off. Jesus Christ, that's so incredibly stupid. So these guys have been cut off, which is nice. I want you guys to come over here and kill these guys off, too. You guys hold. Do this, too. Good. All right, a war of restraint. While enthusiastic about socialism, the people are clearly not enthusiastic about this war. The residents of the Far East, many of them religious, have great sympathy for Alexander Men and its movement. They recall fondly the charity and sacrifice of the worshippers, and may even have friends and relatives who heed the call to arms. The leadership understands, too, that Men is a man who means well but has a very different belief system from ours. His followers are not Nazis, and they must not be treated as such, even if they don't back down. We'll give them a war on the spirit of the god, gentle, humane, and with respect for the combatants. We're losing some war support, but yeah, we get more defense. But it's only for three months, so it's not too bad. Kill them off. Kill every single last one of these pieces of garbage off. These are nothing but death. Ah, there goes Spiel's Germany. Oh, well, there goes the successor. The official successor. You guys head down there. You guys are headed where? Go up through here. Um. Yeah, go down here. Hey, there we go. Skies are ours. That's good. You find them? Why don't you kill them both off? Just, just murder them all. Let's 
so annoying fighting these guys. Where the hell are you going, son? I mean, I, don't get me wrong, I love getting 50 army XP, but still. Go straight to... Uh, man, oh man. This war sucks. Start there. Actually, that's a victory point, so we take that. Pacification, if you're right, like to read about this, please go right ahead. And then, Annihilation. What horrors religion can inspire people to commit? Even the most ordinary man, kind to his family and his neighbors, can be led to the worst of atrocities if he believes that God is on his side. Even with a lenient response, Alexander men's impromptu crusaders will continue to oppress the attack. They have benevolent intentions, but hold a belief born of ignorance that socialists are agents of the devil here to attack their traditions. Sad as it may be, we cannot take this lying down. Soldiers will be instructed to defend themselves how they felt, feel they must. Although never to break the laws of war or common decency in doing so, it is tragic. <coughs> Not their faith leads these people to fight against their liberation, but there never was a bloodless path of freedom. Followed up with measures, or, or reintegration. Our attempts to fight Alexander Men's hordes of believers humanely have been successful, but now we have a new problem. The large population of fervently indoctrinated peasants in our custody, and little idea of what to do with them. These people, although not treated badly, yearn to join the brethren at the front and will likely cause unrest if we allow them to. Although it may not be palatable to some in our government, the captured peasants will need to be reintegrated into the social system. For labor is not an option. Exploiting their labor would make us no better than the capitalists we seek to replace. Reeducation, performed with a tact and understanding, followed by some amount of government assistance, will hopefully ease our door of men's former conscripts. Oh, we got some fascists here. Huh, liberal democracy too. That is unusual to see in the Far East, but okay. We've lost 6,000, which is really not that bad, but at the same time... I hate this. I hate this war. This is the war I look forward to the least. Because everyone else is not too bad. Oh, hello. You find people here, you kill them all, right? That's how it works. They gotta be given up soon, right? Yeah, ish. Sort of ish. Yeah, that's good. Just keep going up. Uh, go up here, and then go up there and there. Annihilation. Followed up with this one. How do we... What? What? We lost an airbase. How do we lose the airbase again? Oh, this must be Cheetah. It's fine. We're nuke dings. It's fine. Hey, we got our capital back. Good. Kill these guys off. Seriously, just kill them off. Come on, guys. Keep moving down. Keep moving down. Where's the capital now? Pavlodar. Not bad. Not bad. You find them, you kill them. That's all it is. That's all it takes. You're going to force the attack? Because you're going to kill them all off. Whether you like it or not. But it is giving our guys some good army XP. So, And experience. Even though we're out of manpower at this point. Do that. It's fine. Ah, we got him. Did we? Oh, yes, we did. Yes, good, 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 good. These guys are awesome again. I hate that war so much, as you can tell. Um, Here, do this. Not bad. Not great. Ooh. I want to finish this focus tree first. Yeah, I want to get that stability, so. The Trial of Alexander Men. With the recent capitulation of some of the last Pseudoplatov's most loyal men, our soldiers have captured men and brought them to our capital. While some may, be, may some of the more radical and reactionary politicians bay for blood, the man deserves the proper trial. Comrade Salvin himself has had some conflicting feelings on what to do with a religious mystic who has not said a single word since his arrival. It would be unfair to kill the man or imprison him indefinitely without a trial after all. Father the man is no bandit king or reactionary disguise as a revolutionary. <clears throat> He is a man who desires the best of his people. Even his vision is fundamentally misguided or highly misinformed. Thus, he will be subjected to the people's justice, and only then will we decide the fate of the father. <clears throat> my apologies, my voice is cracking like I'm a, I'm a pre prebubescent teenager. Oh boy, that is not good to be. Alright, so since we're here, we're going to duplicate this again. We're going straight for 40s. We don't have the equipment or manpower for it, but eventually, eventually, go straight, Artie. If you got it, you might as well use it. Right, right. Infantry. What are they for? Good, good, good. Arm XP. I'm going to wait to throw in recon. That's not too bad, but... Order St. George. We don't have political power to core this stuff anyways, which is really bad for us, but whatever. There you go. Good luck. And then a beacon of freedom. Well, after, of course, we do our infrastructural reserve first. There you go. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
It was an easy path, nor a short one, but now that misguided father stands defeated and the perfidious fascists are shattered, we now find ourselves in control of what was once known as the Russian Far East. Already our dedicated soldiers, commissars, and ideologues are working hard on spreading our message of the revolution far and wide through the vast Siberian territories. We've begun what many are calling referring to as the Red Spring throughout the East. Our soldiers are bringing liberation and the message that a new revolution is here to stay. As Comrade Sabin and his closest confidants continue to prepare for the liberation of all of Russia, and the future of the Far East and Russia in general continues to brighten, and many. For the first time in recent memory, I see a ray of hope where a derelict reactionary union once dominated leftist political thought. The trial of Alexander Men. Actually, how much should we get every single day? 1.4. If we give it 10 days, we actually might be able to core at least one place for ourselves. Head cocked back, Sullivan gazed down through the narrowed eyes of uh, Father Alexander Men. Heavily built and impressively bearded men sat in the dock of his pre in his priest's vestments. Vestments, but his only concession to vanity, a gold cruciform necklace, breathing tranquil. He looked ahead at a state in a state of uh, apparently serenity, one hand resting lightly atop the other. Salvin wondered if the state of his mind was as peaceful as his exterior would lead one to believe. Truth be told, Salvin couldn't quite figure out, figure men out. He wasn't a tyrant, an evil man, although he seemed to believe in the best interests of the Russian people. He also fought against a socialist revolution. Having once been a member of the proscribed catacomb church, he had continually, he continually held that Christianity, not socialism, would be Russia's salvation. A good man at heart, but so misguided. Religion was, as Marx had so famously said, the opiate of the masses. The Russian people would never be free until they liberated themselves from the bishops and their saccharine lies. Alexander Vladimirovich, men, began Braun, as Salvin noted how men did an intense, even the slightest, as the sentence was read out. This court of soldiers and workers finds you guilty of crimes against a socialist revolution. You are hereby sentenced to two years and six months of rehabilitative labor in the service of the revolution. Dismissed. <coughs> Standing, men silently made the sign of the cross. He went with dignity, allowing the soldiers to take him outside with a resistance, not glancing back as though afraid of being transformed into a pillar of salt. Salvin couldn't help but notice the subdued mood of the gallery. They seemed to have been hoping for more of a show. <coughs> Men have been an enemy of socialism, and needed to be punished, but that didn't mean that they had to be cruel about it. As Petruo had once said to him, the strength of the revolution came from the clemency, not from blood, bloody-handed retribution. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath, it leads only to evil. So let's see if we can get up to 25 political power first here. We should be able to. And then, core at least one of these areas, so we can start working on that, and then do one of the focuses, so. Because we united the Far East. Not bad, not great. It was definitely with struggle, though, but was whatever. You know, everything's a struggle. Oh, God, I want to core this up, but... Hmm. Then again, we would have to wait 30 days to just do this one. Kamchatka, Chukwaka. So, for here... 62,000 versus 23,000. Oh, God. Oh, actually, Kamchatka's got a lot of people. Let's do that one first. We can free them. Yay! Yay! Form the Far Eastern... Uh, I want to finish the, this one first. We get more stability, which is great. The red sun rising and slightly decreased coring time, which would be great, 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 great. I don't know if United in the Far East would be very good for us at this time, so we'll just wait a little bit. How much are we out? A lot of guns. Quite a bit of infantry equipment, too, but motorized is looking okay. Look at that. Beautiful. APCs are nice as well. Uh, we need more of this stuff. We need more of that. We need more of that, which all makes sense. Cool. The Red Sun Rising. Laying in the square outside Vernudin's Opera House with Petura, Mahiv, and Ulanovskaya. Salvin tried to belch out the Internationale, but barely got past the third note when he started uncontrollably giggling, setting his comrades off too. Rolling onto his belly, Salvin drunkenly pawed for vodka bottle, but it kept rolling away from him. That made him laugh too. Something back over, Salvin gazed into the sky, watching his black night slowly gave way to the gray of pre-dawn. He smiled to himself, vaguely wondering how many bottles of vodka he'd drunk since he signed the treaty forming the Far Eastern Soviet Republic the night before. That was pretty much the only thing he remembered from the past 12 hours. He had no doubt he'd made it quite f the fool of himself during the party, but what did it matter? If ever they had cause to celebrate this was it, grinning like a lunatic. Salvin imagined what the party would be like when they took Moscow. Look, comrades, shouted Mahiv, pointing to the sun as it created over the uh, horizon. A red sun rises. The heavens themselves turn out for the revolution. That got a ragged cheer from Salvin and the other half dozen dozing uh, revelers, still trying to keep the party alive. Staring into the redding, uh, reddening sky, Salvin couldn't wipe the grin from his face. Against the most impossible odds, they succeeded. They cast down the tyrants, lighting the torch of socialist revolution across the east. Despite the triumph, it wasn't over yet. They still had to bring the revolution west into the lands of the bandits, the madmen, and the oppressors. Looking around him at his closest friends, Salvin realized for the first time that he trusted them implicitly. That the strength they lent him would allow him to climb any mountain, leap any hurdle. Feeling sober all of a sudden, he, he sat up. The party was over. He had to keep the momentum going. The fight isn't over until you win. Well... Oh, look at this. Oh, we're going to stage 2 eventually. That'd be good to do. Regional integration. Boom! Another research slot. And we get some Nave XP, which is great. Can idealism survive in these dark times? Maybe. Just maybe. Ah, yes. A new round of October. 
The fascist heirs of the White Habin have been defeated. There would be hetmans and vaz driven before us in disgrace. The madmen of the Arctic Circle, addicted to the opiates of reaction, have similarly been annihilated. Meanwhile, our brothers and sisters in Alden, who stood so bravely against the tyrant Yagoda, have joined with us. The vast expanses of the Russian Far East have been united under a cause. A new revolution, however, improbable, has begun, and we are ready to fight for it. Thank goodness. It is now 64 still, which is not bad, actually. 64 is not bad. I would like to get some tanks, so we'll work on that stuff as well. We have so much stuff we got to do here. Oh boy. Better engineers, too. Get some better motorized, maybe. Yeah, you might as well. World of Recruitment is gone, which is fine. Just build everything up we can here. Wow. We don't have a lot of open building slots, but then again, it is the Russian Far East. What do you expect? And then eventually do all this stuff, too. That'd be good, good, good. Good, 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 good. Let time go on. Because we can. Nice. So, a new red October, followed up with raising the banner of freedom, the flag of Lenin. Tomorrow's ours. Oh, look at that. Everything from the mutineers ad hoc at HQ had been cleared out from the Opera House, and the shares put back on the rightful place to Sublin. Sitting in the front row, it almost looked as though they'd never been there at all. Sublin breathed deeply, listening to the shuffle, shuffling feet and murmured voices behind him. The place was packed, everyone coming to see the film, an almost immaculate print of Sergei Einstein's. Eisenstein's socialist masterpiece, Battleship Potemkin, unearthed from the landfill in Irkutsk as the lights dimmed and the overture began and Sovin squeezed his wife Nadizia's hand. She looked up at him lovingly and his eyes filled with tears at how lucky he was. It was rapturous. The live orchestra might have been amateurs plucking away at whatever instruments they could scrounge together, but it didn't matter. The motion coding every frame like a brush strokes on a painting needed no adornment for the film's powerful message of revolutionary hope to be felt. The audience cheered at all the appropriate moments. They jeered when the Tsars killed the hero Valkutulinchin, or Valk Vakulinchuk, and Sabin was certain he heard Sabin when the baby was killed at the carriage as it fell out of control down the Odessa steps. During the ending, as the Tsar's fleet mutinied and, saw, and flew the red flag, the audience gave a standing ovation, the cheering drowning, drowning out the orchestra. Sabin looked to the side and the grinning faces of Petro and Akiv. Battleship Potemkin was like an electric charge that rallied anyone who saw it. As the red flag fluttered above the Tsar's dreadnought, Sabin's doubt fell away. The socialist dream had been crushed once more, but someday, soon the red flag would wave once more over the Leningrad. Clapping as the light faded from the projector, Sullivan vowed he'd be the one to raise it himself. To the rifles, brothers, down with tyranny. Raise a red banner. Um, academic base begins to slowly improve, expanding the party. Poverty would be good to do. We'll do this one because I do want to get more political power at the state. Yeah, raise the flag of Lenin. Amidst the chaos of war, tyranny, and calamity, the ideals that drove the red, Great October Revolution have too often been forgotten. Now, though, we have the opportunity to resurrect them. Let's go back to the original writings of Comrade Lenin. Without whom, none of this would be possible. Uh, and build a new state upon his wise words. Though the ideas of Leninism, we can rise from the far stretches of Siberia and bring all of Russia into the revolution once more. If you'd like to read about American supplies arrives, please go ahead. Honestly, that doesn't seem like very much. It barely gave us anything. But, I guess beggars cannot be choosers, so... Whatever. We'll take whatever we can get. Actually, do we have any planes? No, we don't. God dang it. Well, we gotta research planes. A new Red October. Uh, we have Burgundian system here. Here. Nikolai Ivanov. Okay, if you want to read about this, okay. Now, this is a little better. Thanks, America. They must have heard that I said I didn't like what they were giving us, so... Thanks, America. We got civilian factory and industrial equipment begins to improve even more. Ah, that's nice. A new route October. The next move forward. That night, the Opera House was at maximum capacity. Comrades from every floor and every chair, the veteran fighters and the fresh, eager blood gathered to hear Valery Mikhailovich stop and speak. With him stood his comrades in arms, Mikhail Makhiv, holding the first bottle of the night in his hand. Susanna Petro with her inseparable friend, Maya Olenovskaya. And finally, Otto Braun. Sabin was the first... Well, was, was was the one to carry the winds of the conversation that night, and thus he, for the blood-spattered territories of Russia and its tragic past, represented a beacon in the East. Comrades, the Central Committee bickers often, but today, we are united, he shouted, anticipating the newcomers even further. Today, we are no longer the Baratian Autonomous Soviet Socialist Republic. Today, we are something more. We will represent the liberated and the liberators. We will show our increasing strength, and we will make a stand against a tyrant. Tonight, my friends, we will be known as the Far Eastern Soviet Republic. Cheers erupted across the entire opera house, so loud that Sovin almost washed, wanted to cover his ears. Markiev slapped his back with a powerful yet friendly thump of his hand and grinning towards him with an ever tempting bottle. The rest, Petruro, Olenovskaya, and Braun all remained content with silence. The old Jimmy merely cracked a satisfied grin, while Sovin and Petruro exchanged awkward glances that quickly mellowed out into traded smiles. As the shouting died down, Sovin turned once again to face the Central Committee. There's much to do, my friends, I will admit. I am somewhat afraid of the future, but I know that with the comrades that surround me, he said, motioning an arm to his allies beside and behind him, there will be no reason to fear what is to come. So tonight, comrades, tonight is a day to celebrate freedom. Absolutely. I do want to get this one done, too, because this will help us, but let's see. Oh, we have this stuff, too. Oh, my goodness, we have no political power. Ah. <sighs> uh, uh, why can't we do that? We need more PP. Why? Oh, divisions are deployed. Yes, please. At this point, don't even, don't even bother. They're going to train anyways, but whatever. 
I love that we change our flag too. Um, caffeine flow of urine, but that puts your head. Yay! We definitely don't have the supplies for this or the manpower. There we go. Three generals might be a bit much, but whatever. Are we losing political power? We are literally losing political power. Oh my goodness, that's so bad. The state. Despite what some of you go to as propaganda leaflets might have said, we are not anarchists. A strong state will be necessary to the success of a revolution, and that state must be based on Leninist principles. There must be democracy, based in the will of the people, and there must be ideological unity, based in the Marxist science. Only through such a state, apparatus can we achieve our ultimate triumph. If you wonder about this, please go ahead. Every little bit helps, even though it looks like we get nothing there. But I do want to reduce the administrative strain on our budget, or on our state, and get more political power, because that's going to be so, 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 so important for us to do. Oh, I forgot about this too. My bad. Spend and cut. Uh, actually, you know what? Don't cut. Because we need more output, so I don't want to cut it because that doing this would make us lose 15% dockyard output, which is really bad. That is so bad for us. They're proud of the Birats. Like so many of the native folk, uh, the Tsars had subjug subjugated and the endless push to the Pacific. The Birats were proud but deeply wound wound wounded people. Their way of life mercilessly crushed beneath marching boots, thundering locomotives, and roaring tank treads. Every burrow bore the pain within, within their hearts, and they longed to reassert themselves to face the world again as a people unfettered by the bonds and traumas imposed upon them. And so it came to no surprise as to Salvin, when Mahiv approached him to request that Vaknudin's name be changed as a token of recognition to the part of the Virats that played in casting down Yugoda and defeating the tyrants of the east. He suggested the name Ulan Uda, literally meaning Red Uda, named for the mighty river that had sustained the Virat people for millennia before the arrival of the Russians. Seeing the Central Committee's focus turn away from the Siberians, Mahiv was afraid that the Virats would soon be forgotten as the seat of the revolution moved ever westward. My comrade said Southern, smiling broadly and laying a reassuring hand on Mahiv's sh shoulder. Without the might of the Berats, we could have never brought Lenin's light back to Russia. The revolution will never forget your people, no, no, for I would not allow it. Ulan Uda, birthplace of the revolution. And the revolution here? Yes. Well, maybe. Reform. Um, I want to reduce the effects of the other stuff, so. It's not bad. Not bad. I like that one a lot. It reduces the strain of the what we have already here. Um... I want to do all this stuff. I really do. Reduce the strain. I mean... 1, 2, 3, 4. Or 1, 2. We get more political power as well. So let's do... If you want to read about this one, please go ahead. As well as protect proletarian democracy. Please go ahead as well. Reform the Sovonarkom. The Council of People's Commissars, or Sovonarkom, was one of the original units of government established after the October Revolution. It was a council of officials, led by Lenin himself, who exercised ultimate governance over the new Soviet Union. Some within our government, such as Braun and Makiv, are advocating for resurrecting the Sovnarkom to serve as the executive branch of our ever-expanding state. Such a choice would demonstrate the strong will of the state, but some worry that it would only serve to demonstrate a move towards tyranny. Ah, I get more political power, which is great, 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 great. 1.45 billion. Uh, I mean, that's not bad. Ah, that ain't too bad at all. The state. Ah, yes, the state. Keep going up. We'll soon get better industrial equipment. Actually, armies. Oh, not army, but army profession is going up slightly, not much. Industrial XP is not bad. Mechanization, poverty is getting slowly, slowly, slowly worse and worse. That's so not good. Uh, so bad. On matters of ideology, Valery Mikhailovich saw them pace the grand stage of the Opera House nervously, even though there were only four pairs of eyes watching him, and the air felt empty with the countless unfilled seats. Eventually, he stopped up in the middle and sighed, turning his gaze to his comrades. As you know, the policy of ideological pushback in the previous Union of Socialist Soviet Socialist Republics was treating it with caution and advising party unity. <clears throat> His eyes swiftly moved past Susanna Pachero, but he could see her smile before he looked at Mikhail Mahiv, who raised an eyebrow and crossed his arms. It looked like Mahiv wanted to make a comment, but relented. Sullivan took it as an opp opportunity to continue. <clears throat> I say that we should explore the ways a man can think about the revolution after all. Should we not be so dogmatic as to outright deny and spit on opinions that are not exactly our own? Mahiv seemed to take in Sullivan's words, but Ma Maya Volanovskaya couldn't first, surprisingly enough. I believe, though, Len was right in his choice of Titan Party unity. Back then, we saw the entirety of Russia. Nowadays, we need all we can get. Also, Brown merely snorted and shook his head. And what? To let reactionary slip into our ranks? I don't believe we should let any of this silliness occur. This is our revolution, comrades. We cannot let it be tainted by the thoughts of a revisionist. He shrugged. Just my thoughts. For once, Petro was silent, softly biting her thumb and looking just the slightest bit anxious. Sullivan could see that, but he also had to consider that others, what the others had said. Comrade Mahiv said, or began, staring intently at Sullivan. Your choice is final. You know my opinion, but we must move on. It's a time... As time is of the essence, Salvin nodded, and with a breath that gave him enough time to think, he spoke. The choice must be made. And I'm going to do this one immediately just because I want to get it done as fast as possible. Because we already have, I think now we have everything done here. Doesn't have spirit, so we do have the spirit, so we just went there. And economic reforms, we've already done it, so. 
So we're done with this stuff, Dreams of Freedom. Uh, which means we can't do anything here yet, except initiate propaganda campaigns, which honestly is not bad to do, but we're losing political power anyways. And we're gonna lose it anyways. Oh, we need 24 now. Oh, that sucks. You know what? Let's do that. At least get us some more civility first, right? And they'll do it. Cool. And then cure infantile disorders. Within our new union, there must be room for free discourse on all matters of pressing issues. With that said, we cannot allow potential threats to the state to exist at, at all willy-nilly. Intellectual strains such as anarchism must be challenged publicly, and in some cases there must be consequences for spreading them. If we allow political instability to foment itself within our territories, it could be quite fatal. That cannot be permitted. Oh, are, this, are these areas? No, they're still okay, huh? We do have 13 divisions, which is not bad, but Siberia, like, this Commonwealth of Siberia is going to have so much manpower and strength. I'm gonna get, I'm, I get it, we have 40 Commonwealth, but still. Still. Boris, you got anything for us? You're a level 7 attack. Jesus Christ, that's good. Oh, there goes Vyaka. How's it? You guys are still killing each other. Wow, look at this. Komi's doing quite well. Nice. And then the revolution. Yeah, I'll do get poverty. Comrades, we've not just found a new state. We have not just conquered some petty warlords. We've declared a second October revolution in the name of the workers, peasants, and soldiers of all of Russia and beyond. It is of the utmost importance that we hold, uphold the ideals of our revolution or all of our work will come to naught, and Russia will remain forever divided. Yeah, expanding the party. This stuff is all going to do, but I'm going to get down here first. So, hey, not bad. Happy 65, everyone. Hope you're having a great year. Let's go grab... I don't... I prefer the more factory output, but eh, I'll go down the way. That's fine. Get some of this stuff, too. That's fine with us. Wow, we literally can't build anything, can we? Oh, I hate this. strain. These strains suck. Oh, hello. Kazakhstan looks pretty bad. The shift towards Bukharanism. Comrade Salvin is a traitor and will not carry a revolution forward. We must preserve Bukharan's legacy at all costs, or any costs. Many cries of peaceful protesters sounded something similar to, the, to across all across the country. For whatever reason, a rather noticeable wave of support for Bukharanite wing is taken over country. The cities are full of demonstrators, Bukharanite posters adorn building walls, and their flyers flitter or litter the land hands over people. So perhaps even more concerningly, several low-ranking bureaucratic members of our party have simply switched allegiances or jumped ship to fully support the supporters of Bukharan. As far as we know, no major societal rift or change has been noted by our government in order to cause such an increase in support. Despite several of the party's wing, wings, informants in bars, meeting halls, and demonstrations, they all come to the immediate observation that the support simply sprouted out of thin air. However, the attitude in our cabinet is more cynical. Given that both of our wings are roughly equal in raw power and resources, it's incredibly likely that an outside benefactor has been supporting the Bukharan, of Bukharan wing directly. Even after an informant of ours managed to get hands on their financial records, however, there's no succinct proof. And for the time being, we cannot be sure whether the good fortune is coming from. It may be simply becoming unpopular, but paranoia is beginning to run deep among our administration. What could be causing this? Oh, boy. Decree on land. Uh, that costs a lot more than is one, unfortunately. Uh, agriculture. Decree on land. Land reform for many revolutionary governments is one of the highest priorities. It should be the same for us. While there's no need to engage in mass collectivization and displacement, the Far East is hardly the world's most productive agricultural region as such. Agriculture here should be made more efficient. More financial assistance and materials should be sent to the peasants to expand their production, and farming plots should be organized into more orderly arrangements. This way we can use what we have left with what we have with less waste, and produce more calories per acre. Armies march on their stomachs, but nations live on them too. Absolutely. Oh, gosh, spend more construction would not, would not be bad. Even though... Uh, look at all the stuff I want to do. Why? Why? We need to build. We can have some factories. Can we build? Yes, we can. We push towards change. This time, in the cold of the Opera House, there was much more positive tone between Salvin and the men members of the Central Committee. As he shuffled a few papers from his briefcase to a table, letting the others gaze it with curiosity. Salvin tapped against one paper. This comrades, he began holding up in his hand as a copy of the original Soviet decree to pass an eight-hour workday. The rest are others, various laws that were in effect in the original Soviet Union. Susanna Pachero nodded. I'm guessing you'll wish to re-implement this decree. What about the rest? The other members of the Central Committee seem to be content with silence, especially Maya Olenovskaya, who only glanced at the papers with a slow-burning interest. Salvin set the paper down. The other ones, a decree on land, decree on workers' control, and so on, will have to be to readjusted to fit the new revolution. Mikhail Mahib looked at Salvin oddly. Readjust? Should these not be perfectly serviceable the way they are? Salvin merely shook his head. No, Comrade Mahib. Though one of Lenin's first acts was to abolish private property. We have no such luxury here. It'll remain as of right now, but in due time, we will tear down all the framework of capitalist institution. Mahib eyed Salvin warily, and the former commissar smiled. Trust me, Comrade. The revolution will not fail so long as we stand strong. Now, there are decrees to implement, and work, of course, to be done. Workers' decrees. The well-being of the common labor must be a top priority for a government. As such, the central government will put out a series of decrees, effective immediately, intended to safeguard the rights and protect against abuses. 
You must always protect against abuse. Workers will be paid fair wages for their labor. Workdays will be altered to more reasonable lengths and with breaks provided. <clears throat> and the sorts of abuses that foremen used to subject their underlings to must be prevented from here on out. Perhaps workers were nothing more than cattle to be driven under your good about. We must do better. Absolutely. We're going to become an industrial powerhouse as best as we possibly can over here. Eight hour workday and acceptable minimum wage. I don't like minimum wage. I'll be honest with you because it lowers the amount of factories you can put in a safe, but whatever. Declaration of workers' rights. <clears throat> oh, if you want to be a better industrial equipment, please go ahead. In 1918, Comrade Lenin published the Declaration of Rights of the Working and Exploited Peoples. This document formed the basis of the Soviet Union's principal governing documents and declared that to the world that the worker state had been found in the former crucible of reaction. As Comrade Lenin did in the past, we shall do in the present. We will draft our own Declaration of Workers' Rights, declaring our dedication to all those who toil. Copies will be read aloud in town square and then posted on public boards for all to see. Let nobody doubt our commitment to the workers of the world. We get, we get better consumer goods, we get more factory output, and reduce administrative strain on our budget. Or on our state. I keep saying budget, but it's just state. Yay! Good, 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 good. And planes. Jesus Christ, we have literally no planes. That is so bad. Oh my goodness. We get plenty of trucks, though. Ah, uh, sucks. We need more manpower, too. Uh, I do want to spend more. I want to build, 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 build us up. Just build us up more. I know I could be spending on other things, but whatever. Uh, raise the banner of freedom. The people of Russia do not just cry out for a strong, responsive government or Leninist principles. They simply cry out for peace, for stability, and for the promise that their futures will be brighter than their pasts. This ideal of liberation from the cycles of bloodshed have been characterized Russia for decades, which must be reached. We must raise a banner of freedom high above our lands. Not just freedom for the worker, but freedom from fear. For all. My goodness, it's so bad. What are we looking at? So, we're rocking so much artillery, so much infantry equipment. Oh, Uncle Sam arrives in earnest. Cool. Yeah, but our guys are all trained. And they're not looking terrible. Like, <clears throat> this could be a lot better. I apologize for my voice. Like, it's very cracky. Not very good, as you can tell. Raise a banner of freedom, my friends. <clears throat> but with. Uh, expanding the party. I like this one more. The Communist Party is one of the primary organs of governance in our union. If it is to be representative of all the people in our union, it cannot be an organization for the privileged and well-positioned. We should decrease the, no the time required to become a member, reduce the number of committees involved in approving new members, and generally make party membership much less onerous to achieve. In our popular proletarian democracy, bringing more people into the party will only make it stronger. The white, red, white, and blue alliance. Uh, so a week ago, several delegates from America contacted several members of our government to invest in a and proper and its port on top of discreetly shoveling us some industrial aid. This morning, several ships arrived on our shores, carrying literal buttloads of raw industrial equipment, raw materials, and generic supplies. While the sight of Americans were cheered on by many, and nobody will be certainly complaining about the influx of material on our shores, there's something worrying people in the party. The Americans only initiated, initially had, had success contacting the Bukharnites, and thus most, if not all, the work involved in the shipment came through and relied on them. Although certain Salonet members of the government were informed and attempted to reach out to the delegates, no response was received despite Bukharinists essentially having constant contact. Regardless, the Americans are clearly playing favorites for this aid, and many in the Bukharan wing of the party are celebrating. Members of the caucus shook hands with some of the delegates and workers arriving on the ships, creating an uneasy atmosphere among Sablin's cadre. Only time will tell what will become this relationship and the aid received from it, but perhaps it may further exacerbate the rift between our party's great two wings. Great help from the capitalist comrades, regardless. Great! They love us. And then after that... We'll probably do the one that gives it more political power as well. Yeah, I'll do this one. The Komosomol were born. The young uh, pioneers in Komosol were founding, founded to help the values of the Communist Party reach the younger generations of Russia. Komisar Selvin himself was once a member, as many were the, uh, the idealist officers who joined the revolt. By reviving the Komosomol, we can bring a new generation of Siberian children into the party and create a new generation that is loyal to uh, our ideals above all. And? We should get some, some sort of event here, right? No? Well, we'll do that one, ever that one too. So, uh, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. Um, if you think you can come up with a good intelligence agency name for us, besides this one, please go right ahead in the comments below. But I guess I will see you tomorrow when we will end up going to war with the Commonwealth of Siberia and achieving authoritarian socialism through any means possible. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.